Welcome to Bon Jovi Discussions. Today I have my buddy, my brother from another mother. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Jerry. Good. How are you doing? Glad to be back. Doing good. Absolutely. Was this your third episode now? Fourth? It is. Yeah. Third or fourth? Yeah. Yeah. Charm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what we're going to talk about today, which we'll get into in just a second, I figured you're the perfect person for it. And yeah. I know. Like you said, I'm looking forward to it, too, and to sort of see where the conversation goes and where our crazy ideas <laughs> wind up. <laughs> See that, and that's another reason why I picked you. I knew you'd be perfect for the the crazy uh, ideas here. So, but so I guess we'll get into our topic. We are going to talk about a Bon Jovi convention, and people when people sometimes when people hear convention, you're like, okay, that's for nerds. And I I guess with the level we are as fans, like diehard super fans, I guess in a way we have to be nerdy, right? You know, because we're so passionate about our favorite band. And uh, so I thought that would be a fun discussion. You know, talk, you know, obviously, this is just two diehard fans wishing and dreaming of something this cool to happen, you know? So, yeah. Um, hopefully, you know, the band can we can get our ideas to them and see what happens. Right? <laughs> Start tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, you know, given um, sort of this quiet period we had and obviously – knowing an album is in place it's just it's good to have some of these conversations about the band again and um just sort of get excited about the future but obviously just talk about some things that who knows maybe will come to fruition one day yeah exactly you know because other bands have you know like uh kiss for example like I was uh, like, yeah like and they you know and kiss is definitely a money grabbing band no doubt and bon jovi is and isn't Mm -hmm. But like Kiss takes like the money grab into another level. But I will say for Kiss and Bon Jovi does too, obviously. But Kiss really makes it worth your money. You know, like they make sure the fans are happy. And so you look at those conventions and stuff, and they like they've been hands on with it. They've done the cruises, and um, yeah. So let's just talk about um, this convention. We'll, let's keep share ideas here. But you know. What kind of what made me think of the idea was I did the cruise, which John will never ever do again. Mm -hmm. And you didn't do the cruise, right? I did not know. Just um, YouTube videos and just sort of yeah, having a, you know what went on and and just mostly from you and your experiences. But yeah. yeah, but so you know, like I was thinking about my experience. You know, and that's what I kind of thought about this convention was like because the cruise was four full days of non-stop Bon Jovi. You had Bon Jovi playing. You had Bon Jovi videos playing on TVs. You had 2,000 other diehard fans. You had the man himself on stage two nights. And I was like, you know, and that was when I was like, you know what, a convention similar to this would be a really cool idea. Cruise was good, but there were some things that I would have thrown in there to make it the ultimate diehard fan experience, you know? Mm -hmm. and, yeah and, and so i wanted to just hear what you had to say too because not doing the cruise and i you know i've not done some of the ideas that i might bring up i know have been on a smaller scale like on a vip tour ticket where you know you get a tour of the stage and do some other things i think if we could sort of make some of those experiences a little bit better um or at least you know what you think would make it better um it will be interesting to talk about a little bit more exactly and, and you know, and I'll be honest here, you know, just as a, as a fan, Bon Jovi's never really been that good with fan experiences. Obviously, you know, they don't do meet and greets on the tours. They don't really, yeah. uh, you know, and Runaway Tours, I love Runaway Tours. I've done quite a few. I always have a good time. There are things that I would add to it, like like this con these convention ideas. And that's where I could, the, the, the convention and Runaway Tours could go hand in hand. Like they could really make an ultimate trip you know, where they add some of the stuff that we're about to, to talk about. Um, but let's uh, start throwing some ideas. I'll let you go first. Yeah. Well, another thing that came to mind too, because I, I know with um, Def Leppard's VIP tour or VIP passes and tickets, there's a traveling uh, almost museum that comes with it, which I don't know if that would be, you know, I don't know what the cost of that is or if it would be worth to see like, you know, different outfits and guitars and yeah. Um, but like you and I have talked about the ultimate thing is, is I want to, you know, meet the band. So like anything short of a meet and greet is, is not necessarily something of huge interest, but, um, having this type of convention idea, like the first thing that comes to mind is, is just obviously a big convention space or a big enough space where like, 
you know, we could have like the Sophia stage or, or a stage from the past tour where, you know, fans can walk on and like visibly touch and um, just sort of have that. I don't know. I think that would be a really yeah. cool vibe. You, you, you had a really good point. I want to back up just for a second to the memorabilia. I, I think if you were to do a diehard fan convention, you would have to have some of this cool memorabilia because you and I, you know, I've done every, I've done VIP every single tour and they usually have some memorabilia. So it's like, as, as a fan, it's so cool to see jackets that are guitars that John or the band has played or, you know, mm -hmm. stage use, you know, stage use stuff. I love seeing that stuff. And so I think to have like a room dedicated, like on the cruise, they had, a you know, I think in the atrium of the ship, they had just tons and tons of outfits that John has worn over the years, like like the U571 uniform that was. Oh, yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah. You know, stuff from the 80s I've never seen before. Stage I would love to see uh, the Circle Tour, that red jacket on those European oh, dates. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that jacket. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so I, I think fans would really appreciate seeing that stuff. Now, obviously, you know, some fans are going to want to touch it. I think, you know, with how authentic and mm -hmm. the genuineness of the item, they're going to have, you know, roped off or glass and stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so maybe like, uh, you know, obviously we're now talking about four decades, maybe like, you know, each decade you have a room or, or something where it, it can get really detailed with different different guitars or what what drums Tico was using or, you know, that kind of thing, too. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I guess, you know, since you brought up the I was going to wait till later, but since you brought it up, maybe let's get into it. The whole yeah. meet and greet thing. And you and I both know the. uh you know, the band are, is very gracious if you catch the, at a, you know, during a reasonable good time, you know, not during dinner, you know, when they're eating dinner in a restaurant, you know, but yeah. we fancy them on the streets or, at a, you know, they're usually pretty gracious with taking pictures and signing autographs and stuff. Beyond that, we know that they've, they've never really done official meet and greets for sale. Um, and so I, I think it's pretty clear the band really doesn't like to do meet and greets. And one thing that you always see fans complain about that they don't understand too is runaway trips. Like I said, I love runaway trips and I completely understand what I'm about to say. Fans think that they can do these runaway trips and meet and talk to John for minutes and minutes, but they don't oh. realize that there's <laughs> hundreds of other fans that yeah. John has to get through and they don't have that kind of time. So fans have to understand, you know, get your photo, say hi real quick and then go. You know, and I think that's what could potentially happen to this convention unless they, you know, if you make this like a, let's, let's pretend we're talking about like a four night convention here. Yeah. Split it up every night, you know, where you have maybe you only open it up to a thousand fans for this convention and then you do 250 fans each night, you know, with a band, you know, and you, you get, you can say hi, get something personally signed. Or I don't know if you've ever done an actual Comic Con convention. Have you done one of those? I haven't, but I think I have a pretty good understanding of of maybe how that works, and I think that would be pretty applicable. Um, but yeah, sort of go on with what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually pretty cool. So I've done two Comic Cons, um, and it's actually pretty cool. You just line up to an artist table, and mm -hmm. then you eventually get up to them. You can pick out a photo that you want. They do, you know, like combos where you do a selfie and a photo or a selfie and an autograph or autograph only or selfie only, blah, blah, blah. But it, it's cool because you get a little bit of a minute or two to interact with them, you know, tell them what you want to say. They'll sign however you want something signed. I think that'd be pretty cool, you know, have a line with all the, you know, I'm talking John, I'm going to say Richie, yeah. Phil. <laughs> you know, Tico, Q, David, Everett. Do I dare say Shanks? <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you know, but but people who've been involved uh, with the band for all these years who've added to the band's success, even Obi and Matt, John's brother, mm -hmm. you know, all these guys have really added to the band's success. And um, you know, do it that way. Or just do where the band, you know, kind of like what they did for like the circle sign in New York City, where they had the whole band at the table, they signed an item and they didn't take photos, but add 
the photo to this idea. Yeah, you know? exactly. So you, you circle through, say hi. You get maybe 30 seconds to a minute, you know, and then go. Obviously, you know, fans like you and me and all the other fans that are listening to this, like, well, I want more than that. Me too. Yeah, yeah. But you also have to see their time too. Yeah, and I think it'd be a little bit more applicable for the band too, because trying to get through all these meet and greets, and then the day of a show, and you know, trying to get ready for the show, and all yeah. of that, it just, it just it might be too hectic. So I think they would sort of understand and know what they're getting themselves into by having this type of you know atmosphere and, and convention where they would have to you know take up a little bit more of their time to almost have you know give people what they're paying for sort of thing. Exactly. And, and you brought you bring up a, a really good point there because a lot of these like celebrities that do these comic cons and stuff, they realize that they're going to be staying in a lot that day. They have to make everybody happy and, and they are there for the fans. And I think that's something that the band would have to do is, you know, it's it, for the fans to just kind of grit your teeth and go get through it. But, you know, then you bring up shows, too, and I guess we could talk about that. It would be – what kind of shows would you like to see at a, at a convention? Yeah, I was thinking about this today because, you know, part of me is like if if this is in, you know, a, obviously a big city and there's a convention center and it's right next to an arena, do you, do you like, have, you know, a four-day convention and have shows every night at this arena? Or do you have it on a larger scale, like in a stadium? Or do you really treat this – smaller population to a, a theater of some sort um so you're getting you know um like a an arena act but in a theater um so because obviously if it's a four night event you you don't necessarily want to hear songs that are on a on a stadium or an arena tour um yeah. like like you talked about so many times you want to hear those deeper tracks that you don't hear that probably john and the band would really appreciate playing because they they don't necessarily have to play you give love a bad name every you know every night of this of this convention so um that's it's almost like i'd rather have like a small intimate not club but like theater type of type of experience yeah, me too and you, you hit the hammer on the nail there because like the cruise you know one night john did an acoustic set mm -hmm. the next night he did a full-on rock show so yeah. my idea was you could do an arena show. Maybe the final, night. Night. The, the final exactly. night. Yeah. The final night have a big blown out, big produced arena show. But, you know, the other nights, do, like, do acoustic. Like, I'd love a storyteller's event where mm -hmm. the band talks um, and, you know, answers questions. They do acoustic performance. Something similar to, like, this life feels right, you know. Um, you know, or and second, I do, like, a theater show where they're doing deeper songs you know because obviously the, the convention diehards are going to be there yeah diehards are going to want to see the deeper tracks you know i'm okay if i don't see prayer and it's my life and bad name and all those you know i want the deep stuff um so i think that'd be kind of cool yeah i think it would be too and that makes a lot of sense just variety and yeah. uh and like you said too like do we dare entertain the idea of like a john and richie acoustic performance or <laughs> or what that would look like these days i don't know we are daydreaming here so yeah. <laughs> i think we could put that idea in the list yeah. here i would absolutely love that that's a good idea yeah i would love that you know what else would be cool if they like even like the whole band did like a acoustic or a theater show and fans got to submit what deep songs that they wanted and the band would review the list of those songs and it was like, okay, we'll do that. Like say I put in Blame on the Love of Rock and Roll or It's Hard Letting You Go or I Want You. And John, mm -hmm. okay, we'll do it. Let's do it. It's Hard Letting You Go. You know? Yeah. Whereas yeah. it's fan picked songs, you know? Yeah. No, I, I like that better. And I think, yeah, I'm definitely leaning more towards that than, you know, a, a, a big production show. I think we we get that anyway on a tour. So why not? sort of but, take, you know dress it down and yeah or but I, I do like the idea of the last night with being a full arena on show but I, yeah. I think like the first few nights i think would have to be a more intimate because that's like the beauty of runaway trips and I'm next runaway trip you and i gotta go on it yeah what yeah I'm, I'm sort of waiting for some sort of announcement or but that's definitely on the on the bucket list 
Yeah, you know, but like just seeing John or even the band in a new light where it's more intimate, very not as crowded and stuff, you know, it, it, it's mm -hmm. definitely a different aspect. And I'd love to see something like that for a convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, anything else you want to add to the shows? Um, I do. Yeah, go for it. The John and Richie thing. I I, I never yeah. thought of it until you just mentioned it. And so now I'm kind of like, all these ideas yeah. are coming to my head. Yeah, per 94, or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just seeing John and Richie doing stuff together or even like having like different band members do stuff like uh, like David could have his own little show, you know, because I would absolutely love seeing David play piano and, sit and do covers of Bon Jovi songs. I should say covers because he's made the Bon Jovi songs, but, you know, do Bon Jovi songs, do some stuff off of his solo album. Richie could also do a solo show. John yeah. could do a solo show. Tico could do like a drum drumming class or something, you know? Yeah. Or now, the, the David Bryan stuff's a good idea too, because I don't think, I mean, I'm sure people listening here understand, like he still can sing so well. And granted, like the videos you see of him nowadays are like some island, <laughs> you know, doing living on a prayer at some party, but I feel like he He's definitely drink in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe do like a David Bryan karaoke <laughs> or something. But I, I think it'd be great because you see like other YouTube videos, you know, from long ago where he's sitting there doing wanted or prayer in these arms. Oh yeah, you know, it's just phenomenal, and I, I, I love that. Um, and to see him play more, you know, into in an intimate scene, and to see, you know, because. You know, he's sort of tucked behind, you know, on stage and just to sort of see him really, um, you know, close up with his craft would be would be pretty cool. Yeah. And, and I think also like doing like a special afternoon class of something, not a class, but like an event where each band member has their own, you know, special thing that they like to like, like Tico would do art. David would talk. Yeah, about or I was thinking uh, Tico play some golf. <laughs> golf? Tico there. <laughs> what, what do you think John would pick as his uh, special class? um that's a good question um oh, I, I already know the answer well it, this reminds me of like uh on the uh back when we were or, uh when we were a beautiful documentary you know they had some days off in london and you know richie's hanging out with jimmy page and david bryan's going to see uh tennis at wimbledon and you know tigo's playing golf so uh but and you know john's trying to buy an nfl team <laughs> yeah. so um what do you think it would be Hampton water. Yeah, there will I'll do that one. <laughs> you know, as much as I'm joking, <laughs> probably the yeah. truth. <laughs> I got my my hat that doesn't fit. <laughs> I uh, I got mine in, in the, the closet there. But yeah, <laughs> as much as I'm joking here. I don't know if it's a shameless plug, but yeah. <laughs> he probably probably would. Because I remember the cruise, Hampton Water was everywhere. Yeah, that would definitely need to be a part of the convention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know what Richie would, would do. Um, Phil, I could see doing something, you know, guitar, like a guitar clinic or something. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. Or seems like he's like a comic book something or like just seems like yeah. he can, he's the superhero. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> you know, and another idea too with these like afternoon events, something cool that they did on the cruise was they did a Matt and Obi uh q a session it was it was kind of cool to like learn some inner circle stories about you know like like behind the scenes on the tours or albums or you know mm -hmm. it'd be kind of cool to have like um some like mike rue uh or obi matt um you know like, or like even different producers like shanks or luke evans peter collins yeah unfortunately bruce has passed away but bob rock um who else has produced? Well, Shanks has pretty much taken the majority of the band now. We we got Fairburn, he passed, Bob Rock, Peter Collins. Um, yeah, you know, but all, all these different producers just kind of like hear their stories. Yeah. There are Desmond Child. Oh, yeah, that'd be good too. Yeah, just to sort of have people's um, you know, take or experiences with with the band, you know, outside of like what we what we see them as, obviously, like in the public eye, and just sort of get a better understanding of, um, because even like you, you know, your your conversation with Desmond Child, just talking about him and John hanging out as friends, and that was that was just sort of really cool to to get a better understanding of their relationship and some of the experiences that they've had together, um, you know, 
because as we know that i mean they are these ginormous rock stars but they're you know regular people too just but to see how do they act you know outside of what we typically think of would be would be interesting exactly and that's why it's like kind of cool to like meet some of these like i've been fortunate lucky enough to been able to i know you've been able to meet john too once Mm-hmm. And just to kind of see them in person, just like they're just normal guys. And they just like, like sometimes like you forget all these, like this is a rock star in front of me. You know, that's how humble and nice they are. You you, you forget who they are, you know. Mm-hmm. And I use the term forget because obviously you don't forget, but use that term loosely, you know. But you yeah. just don't, like, like, oh my God, like this is John Bon Jovi in front of me, you know. Um, next thing, how about we talk about exclusive merch? You know, because as a, I know you're not much of a merch collector. Well, you kind of are, a little bit, yeah. But obviously, you take it to the, to, <laughs> in the best way possible, the next level, <laughs> or the level. <laughs> no, you're 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 not not crazy, but in a yeah. good way. Good, good crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been a collector for 23 years. So like every event that I go to, I always have to have something. Like for example, the Cheddar Cookoff. They have these exclusive shirts every year. I always get them. Yeah, you need to have you need to have your own uh, like station or stand at the convention. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. You know, and uh, like my wife always jokes with me every single tour, like the first show that I do, my wife just makes fun of because I go right up to the merch stand and I go this 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 and this 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 this," you know, and pretty much like I I have like bagfuls of merchandise, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, so my so yeah, I'm a huge merch. Bon Jovi merch collector, you know, like I'm on eBay every day collecting things. Um, and so, but yeah, so like be cool to have like exclusive merch from there, you know, like Bon Jovi convention t-shirts, you know, like my brain is kind of half tired here. So I'm like trying to think of cool ideas, but like, like signed memorabilia too would be cool. Like mm-hmm. they could like sell like stage used stuff from the past you know, like whether there's like guitars, you know, like, like remember uh, the circle tour where John did like 10 nights where he'd play a certain guitar, he'd play his talking, uh, talking me and then sell it. Yeah. And I think the person, you sort of want to know where those go or, or where that stuff is, is it, is it stuff that can be, you know, put on display. And I, um, and I know too, I'm not a part of the, the JBJ backstage stuff, but he's gone through and, brought yeah. something back to life a little bit but you know obviously there's probably a, over 40 years of of this and more there's there's stuff that can they can keep doing that with yeah exactly you know and you gotta think because there's a little video on there where john does go through some of the archives there's boxes and boxes and yeah boxes and stuff you could easily find some stuff from over the last 40 years and auction them off to fans you know sell it or auction and then those proceeds could go to the soul foundation yeah, that's a good idea. You know? Yeah. And, you know, like me, for example, I love buying stage used instruments or guitar picks, you know, or yeah. maracas or set lists, you know, you know, they got that stuff, you know, even if it's yeah. tech gear, I'd buy it, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a good idea too. So, I mean, all, you know, proceeds are going, you know, to the soul kitchen or, or, yeah. you know, to the foundation itself or um, any other of the charities that, you know, that he has specific, but um Exactly. I think fans would totally be totally be down for that. Just have it be at a you know, at a one stop shop type type situation. So, yeah, you know, Phil just auctioned off a guitar. I that saw that he, for like an elementary school or or something yeah. like that. Or, Music mm-hmm. program. So that's another, yeah, like, yeah. He, it was a guitar that he played during Amen in 2019, and ah. the band signed it. And uh, I just think it'd be so cool to have that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah, especially like that it's, um, you know, been played live. It's not just some, you know, knockoff or cheap guitar or, you know, has some actual sentimental and like value to it in that in that perspective. Not not money, obviously, but just that it's been played or so. And and all the guitars and equipment they've gone through, it's like you would, you would think like not to sound repetitive, but you think it would be available. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't have to be stage used stuff either. You yeah, know, they could potentially do, you know, like like I'm sure they have like boxes packed with 
you know, promo photos, of, you know, because everything they do, they get copies of, you know. Yeah. So say they do a photo shoot for Crossroad. Okay. They It comes from John's personal collection. He signs it and then auctions it off, you know, or like say he did, for, for example, like th this picture here, like Tico's glasses, you know, like th yeah. stuff on runaway tours where they've auctioned off jeans they you know like i had a pair of john this sounds weird saying i was you know but i had i had a pair of john's jeans from the bounce tour that i got from the runaway trip you know sounds weird saying it now but when i was younger yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah. As, a, as a fan you love collecting that stuff because it's not in a weird stalkerish way it's just as a fan yeah as a collector you know fans like us dig that stuff yeah well and the way he talks sometimes it's like you might have taken his only pair of jeans, <laughs> you know, because he's always like, oh, I, you know, I bring a couple T-shirts and a <laughs> couple jeans on tour. But um, in his famous Allen Iverson stage shoes. Yeah. And that, that he could auction those off, you know, but like different photography said, like, like um, I'm trying to think of like a like they would never do it. So this is like really far fetched, but like their suits from the uh, box set. Oh, the gold suits, yeah, yeah. But I get like you, they'd be they would sell that off to like Hard Rock or something. Actually, I yeah. think Hard Rock just rents them or something, or something like that. I don't know how that works. Yeah. But, but our yeah. convention, our convention would be better. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, Hard Rock. you can't yeah. have. It's for the four day Bon Jovi convention. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um. So in like, what were we thinking too? Like, is this like? in new york city or or you know is there like a one destination type situation or See, i think it'd be you know there's so many diehard fans around the world especially yeah you know, it's almost like a traveling type of yeah. situation you know, like so, a traveling yeah. show yeah you know so like bring it to you know the states you can do new york city la and maybe florida and then go off to europe and then Australia. Yeah. you know like maybe do like a five to ten stop convention you know and I don't know. I think it's a good good question. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's almost like, do you? It would sort of be exhausting to like uh, put a tour like in with this convention and like just have the convention oh, yeah. follow the tour. But you know that that's sort of a that's a big ask. But you know, like have like you know the day before the show be the or the two days before a show be the convention and then have the show and then. I don't know that that technically gives the band more time to like in between shows to to rest and whatnot. But then again, they're if they're going to be at these conventions, that might be a pretty big ask for the band members to be traveling and do the shows and do the convention. Yeah, you're right. You know, you know what's a good idea is if this happens like their retirement era. You know, like when they're all retired. Yeah. yeah. That they don't have anything else to do, and I don't mean that in a bad way. But yeah. Like, you know they're retired you know i think that'd be a fun time to do it you know mm -hmm. um because i was also thinking too like um i know obviously they've done residencies like at the o2 in london and some other things but i don't know like if it would be you know like a vegas residency like because i was just thinking you know def leppard's done a couple and like it seems like those types of uh venues would be like a perfect size for something like this That's for sure idea. but doesn't have to be in Vegas necessarily, but like that type of yeah size show. Um, but uh, that's a that's a really good idea. You know, obviously, you know the band would have to be really involved with this convention though for it to really sell. Yeah, you know, you know for me, a big selling point for the band to be there. But let me ask you a question: Would you still do a convention? without the band there everything else that we've talked about the memorabilia the auctions the you know the, the parties and stuff would you still go if the band was not going to be there I'll, I'll raise you one yeah the band was going to do one show but that was it they weren't doing anything else just a show um my my gut feeling is yes just because i'm i'm to the point where i understand there's only so much left of the band that will appreciate live um so it's almost like you just have to take advantage of every, you know, situation that comes up. Um, I know because even like you know, I definitely want to do the next Runaway tour, and but that again, you you there's a good chance, my understanding, you meet John at least for a second. Um, 
because like in the past you know i haven't done like a vip ticket just because you don't get to meet the band um but now i'm like you know i'm i'm like i said i'm, I'm to the point where do you do that to get as much of an experience as possible even though it's maybe not the best experience if that makes sense just sort of and obviously like financially like that's another big right. portion of it too but um a part of me is just like the more i can be around fans like you and like just it, it just it, that would just be i think the cool part for me because that's you know how we started our friendship is like you know not to sound repetitive based on other podcasts but like when you were talking about the band the way that i do and i'm like who is this kid like <laughs> this is you know i just i just had tunnel vision i guess or just never understood obviously i knew the fan base around the around the world was incredible but just to not really be exposed to it you know i'd go to shows and like people would just know the hits and didn't really understand the influence of the band so um i think my answer is yes and in regard to just being around fans like you and i would be just would be pretty awesome that's my answer too because the runaway trips or even i just did the chili cook-off you know and and there was probably a few hundred fans and you know they're all there to meet john but the yeah. great thing of, like this year was like there was no bon jovi events and usually every year i get to see my bon jovi friends and the chili cook-off the highlight of me was seeing all my friends again you yeah. know and obviously seeing john was great but that's only a, like a couple minutes of, of the day. You know, then you got hours where you're with your friends. It's, it's like going to a concert, you know, seeing your friends for the day, then going to the show. Then after the concert, you go with your friends and have dinner and talk about the show. Runaway children are the same. You make friends, you have your friends. And so, like you said, the, the highlight, I think, would be sharing that experience with other fans who love the band as much as you. Because outside of this, people just don't get it. You know, no, no, but we do. And I, I think for us to be able to come together is a great way to share the love for the band. And then, you know, yeah. like like you and I, for example, like we're such good friends that our friendship goes beyond Bon Jovi. It got started because of Bon Jovi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. we talk about other stuff besides Bon Jovi, you know? Yeah. And it's like, and I, again, not to sound repetitive, but you know, when, when I went to the, you know, the, the tour last year and that first night you know they play radio and just older and love's the only rule and i'm there by myself and i try to explain to my friends like and my family like afterwards like oh my god they did this and then they played this song they haven't played the song since you know this date and <laughs> and they're like yeah okay like that's cool <laughs> like, like i don't <laughs> care yeah so yeah. um just to be you know around more of those type of you know you know our people if you will that yeah. would be that would make it um super special i was talking to you know just a funny story here i was talking to my colleague today and he always makes fun of me in a good way about you know how much i love this band and uh living on prayer came on the radio and i'm like this song is such a gem blah 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 and he and uh, so i told him the story about how john didn't want it on the album and richie kind of convinced him to put it on blah 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 and, and desmond too i didn't know that until you're yeah, until yeah. Your i didn't know that either and um and John was like, or my, my colleague was like, I don't care. Yeah. You know, like, like, you know, like I'll try to like build a conversation from it. But like you and me would like talk about it. Like, yeah, it's like, I'm astounded by it. Like, how can, how could this not make the album? And, and John has never been good at picking the singles, but, but you know, we have a conversation about it. You can't yeah. have that. Like, or, you know, you know I, I gave my dad a call the other day, like, Hey, like, you know, the band's in Nashville making a record and he's like, okay, okay like, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, yeah. So it's like not very many people that I know, you know, get excited about that, obviously. So, yeah. um, but yeah. that's okay. Saves, exactly. sa saves it for us. <laughs> exactly. So I think just a, a runaway trip, a convention, it, it, it creates a space for fans to gather and share their love for the band. So, you said yes. I, I'd say yes to even if the band had no involvement with a convention, I would still go. Now, obviously, you still have to have perks in there for it to be worth anything. You know, like I said, selling autographs, selling memorabilia and stuff. Maybe having a watch party of the Crush Tour live from London. Or, you know, yeah. stuff. Yeah. You, you'd have to have events still that 
ha involve the band, not not the band being there, but you know, like I said, like watching a DVD with in a theater with with other fans, you know. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna get a lot of fans. Say, I wouldn't go if it wasn't if the band wasn't there, and I think you truly would miss out, you know. Yeah, and and that, and that, and that's what people want to do then. Yeah, that's fine. But speaking of you know theaters and stuff, and obviously you being a big Taylor Swift fan, I I'm, I just get so jealous that you know it's not Bon Jovi that's so popular <laughs> right now. Like, but, like, but that's okay. She she's amazing, and I like her songs. But it's like I just you know one it, it's not like you know sport uh, music is not like sports where your your band or your group is on top. But it's like I just wish there was some something to brag about. I guess you know what I mean. Like. I wish Bon Jovi is more at the forefront and maybe they will be with, you know, 40th anniversary and there's an album in the works, et cetera. But I am a, I, and you are too, you know, we're both ride or die fans. Like we are legit diehards. We always will be blah, blah, blah. You know how much I love this band. They are my favorite band. Always will be. I do not think they'll ever be big, big again. You yeah. Know? Like not I even think they, they I think they're okay with that almost. Yeah. Like they, like they don't have a, that type of ego anymore. Yeah. Right. Even, or, not even to the level of 2010, 2011, where they were the biggest tour of the world. Huge. Yeah. I, I think now they're at that point where they're just a legacy band, and people will go just to see Prayer and Bad Name, and then that's yeah. okay. You know, and, and to be honest with you, I kind of like that because I I feel like. Bon Jovi is more mine, you know, like with Taylor, yeah. you know, Taylor, everybody loves Taylor. Yeah. Taylor. You can't even go on. You can't, you know, I love Taylor. I do. She's my celebrity crush. I love her music. She's amazing. Yeah. But I got to tell you with, with, with her hype, you get tired of it after a while. All you right. Know? That's yeah. To see it from the other side, I, that, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and for, so with Bon Jovi, like, like, like you go to the store and you wear a Taylor shirt, People would be oh, I love Taylor. But, yeah. Like, yeah. like you feel yeah. like you have to shit. You know, I, I put these in quotes, share her. But and as for Bon Jovi, it feels like it's more quote unquote mine, you know. Uh, yeah, no, I get I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you have your pros and cons, I guess. You know, yeah. I, I feel like now, like in like Slippery New Jersey days, obviously they were, you know, and you didn't have social media at the time, but I feel like Taylor was their separate New Jersey era. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and you know, T Taylor's career is going to, you know, you have your peak in your career, any artist. Eventually, you're going to have fans that are going to get tired of you at your peak. Yeah. You know, sure. I guess I guess this has become the Taylor Swift podcast here. Yeah. yeah you know, I'm sorry to bring that up. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, and Bon Jovi's peak was, you know, 86 to 91, you know. Oh, as amazing. far as success and high high are their careers taken off and that yeah. was that was their heyday yeah and the <laughs> band's peak musically was the 90s but it wasn't the success that Slipper new jersey had yeah um crush had a peak too crush had a very high success level yeah and i i don't necessarily think much of i mean i love the circle record but i just i just in my opinion that that live band at that point is just I yeah. think they're best. They're best, but you know, it's a it's a good it's a you know fair discussion to have. But um, like we talked about the other day, like Saturday night at in Barcelona, in the the Circle Tour slash Greatest Hits Tour. If I were to tell somebody to listen to one song from them, I think it'd be that performance of that song. Just yeah, just awesome. Yeah, I would show always ninety five, live from London. Yeah, um, I was because I was thinking that or, or the Hyde Park one too from from two thousand eleven. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I always say you know the, we're kind of veering off here, but like the circle yeah. tour was just phenomenal. and we could talk more about it when we get off the recording here. But the circle tour had the best set lists, best it, shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The band was just at, at that time like this is us. We we've been an established band. We're here celebrating sort of you know and this is who we are you know you, you have a stature band at that point now it's a legacy band you know if, if you can understand the difference there maybe yeah not. yeah no no uh but to go back a little bit i had mentioned earlier like having like a, a stage or something at the convention that people can 
you know, take pictures with or actually like, and I know this has been a, an opportunity with other tours and VIP tickets. You can tour the stage before the show, blah, blah, blah. But I think it'd be cool to have some sort of, you know, a stage from a previous tour or, or just to, just to yeah. um, like the, the, because we can tour with in the arena tour with those columns that went up and down and the pictures in the back, just to sort of see that again would be really cool. Yeah. But see, the thing is like, that's all rented stuff. That's you know? yeah. 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 But like, I think so. Sophia, like our convention. <laughs> but I do think, I, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard Sophia, John has it stored away somewhere. Ah. I've heard that, but like stage, like, you know, but like, you know, you bring up the 2013 stage, you could at least maybe do the heart and dagger logo that they had yeah. on the panels. Yeah. You know? yeah. I don't know, you know, and if you did do like a theater or an arena show, offer backstage tours because I love every tour. I love doing the backstage tours, you know. Yeah, just memorabilia, being on stage, seeing the band's view, being, yeah, you know, and people that aren't the diehard fans, no one's listening to this that aren't diehard fans. But like you say it to Joe Schmell, they're like, oh yeah, I got to see John Mike stand up close. You're like you're, fine. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But when I think, oh, that's awesome, you know. Yeah. Maybe well, maybe Sophia's in like some island, and we have to have this convention at some yeah Jovi Island <laughs> because you you and I both know that stage is massive. Yeah, that that's you know yeah. I wonder if it's still like all in one piece or I don't know. That's sort of interesting. Yeah. Well, I heard if I remember correct because I was watching um, some 2013 videos yesterday, and. Uh, and I think I remember in an interview John did back in 2013, and I could be wrong on this if my memory isn't right, but it took it took the crew like a day to build it. Oh, just for oh. one show and take it down that, or yeah. just to build it in general, yeah. Like a day just to build it in general, like they'd have to build the day before. And I think a lot of stadium stages are like that. Like I know like uh, Taylor's Eras Tour stage. Oh, they have to have like two or three stages probably. Yeah. One's yeah, going up, one's going down. Yeah. Exactly. So, but yeah, that, that'd be pretty cool. But you'd have to have a pretty big space to put that, you know? Yeah. But And because I was just thinking too, like just random artifacts, like when they played in Des Moines back in 2013, there was a huge Bon Jovi uh, like flag or, or poster that was on the side of the arena. I'm sure that was owned by the arena, not the band. So who knows? Who knows where something like that's gone? But like just just to multiple rooms or huge rooms of all this type of kind of stuff would be would be really cool to I know. really take some time and look at yeah that's why i, lo I love collecting that like, i love collecting that stuff you just mentioned you know you find that stuff on ebay you know, because usually fans take it after the show or the arena will auction it off or they th yeah. you know, unfortunately they're throwing it away i remember i did pittsburgh uh a few years ago and i wanted some kind of band and they wouldn't give it to me and i don't know what they what they do with it no know? yeah and exactly and also like going back to being around people that you know are diehard fans like sometimes you know you just you get annoyed at an arena show because like you know maybe somebody's closer than you are <laughs> and you think that <laughs> they don't deserve you know so i'm sort of being an ass a little bit but like you know what i mean but like if you're at a show like where you know everyone is like die hard and like they're not just here to listen to bad medicine yeah. or whatnot but again i'm sort of being a little petty but like no I, i'm with you because the the sad part that we're in now are the autograph hounds and the oh. you know like people who go to a show and they catch a guitar pick used by richie you'll see it on ebay the next day for a hundred dollars and yeah. so staff at these arenas are catching on to that they're like we're not going to give that to you like I yeah remember, uh 2013 tour or something like that uh john threw a guitar pick at, when he was on the circle stage yep i was kind of on his left and i really wanted it and uh the the guy that security would not give it to me at all he wouldn't give it to anybody and wow. even after the show like i stuck around for a little bit you know and, you know after a show's over they say you gotta go you gotta go you can't be here you gotta be here like, yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, I get it, but like, there's a huge line leaving the arena. You can't go anywhere right now, anyway. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah. And so, like, and I was so sincere, and I sang every word to the entire show, and I said, "Can I please have that guitar pick?" You know, I'm a huge fan, a huge collector. He goes, "No," and then, "Come on," I said, "Is right," and he picked it up, 
And I remember I wanted to hit him so hard. He picked it up and put it in his pocket and walked away. I was like, you mother effort. Like, I and wanted- who knows? He probably lost it a week later, maybe. but <laughs> He probably sold it on eBay. But yeah. like, yeah. And so like, it kind of goes back to, you know, selling merch or, you know, band memorabilia that they've used, you know, because fans would really appreciate having that stuff, you know? Yeah. And you wonder like when the band is done and stuff and, you know, I hate to say like when the band is long and gone, what happens with all this stuff? You know, you, you know, it's yeah. like museums and stuff, but otherwise it's just going to sit, you know, like something I like Gene Simmons that he's doing right now is like, he does a, an event and this would be kind of cool too, to kind of conclude the podcast episode here. Another idea that they could do is I know Gene Simmons is doing like, he's going through his archives and signing stuff and uh, like, like sunglasses he wore in the eighties. Like, yeah. And you have to buy it before. And like Gene will have like an event in LA, okay, on this such and such day. If you want to go, you have to buy a ticket and then you have to buy uh, a merch box where it has stage used stuff, personally owned stuff. And then you get to go and Gene will present it to you and he'll sign stuff. He'll sign the box. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure there's more to do. I pay attention closely enough to it, but it seemed pretty that's, cool. That's, that's a cool concept too, yeah. Yeah, um, but it was funny what, going back to the guitar pick. So I have a pick from that from the 2013 tour, and I I picked it up off the ground and I look, I turn it over, and no offense to Hugh McDonald, but it's a Hugh McDonald pick. <laughs> it says uh, Hugh on the back, and I'm thinking now oh, maybe it will say John or you know. <laughs> yeah. But but do you, do you have any picks? Um, just the one. I have yeah. a, I have a tongue here. I'll mail you one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was interesting because I uh. Um, I just have never had any luck with like getting, getting things. And, uh, so when my buddy and I, um, obviously it's not Bon Jovi, but we saw, you know, Steel Panther, the mighty Steel Panther. I'm going to put that in there quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we like, he, like we, I got a drum stick from, from that show. And I'm like, that's like the first time I've ever gotten something, you know, from the crowd. But I think, like you said, if you stick around and sort of look on the ground or, you know, you might find some things but um but yeah all that kind of stuff is i think way more meaningful obviously to us than yeah you know random guy or girl but yeah and one last idea that i think would be cool to if they were to do um some shows another cool convention idea would be um like tico's drum kit or not drum but like the drum heads or guitar yeah. or the set list that they yeah. use that night for that convention show they auction off the next day yeah no, I, I like that. Yeah. Or I was thinking, I just thought of this too. Like um, there's, there's like, obviously like big, like photo booths fans can, you know, change the background and have it be whatever, like an album cover or, or oh, a picture yeah. band or like just have a goofy, like, yeah. you know, or you can put on different things and yeah, like a big photo shoot type thing. That I, I like that idea. Yeah. 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 You know, Cause you got to make it fan oriented, you know, like, like, I keep going back to Taylor Swift, but she's like just on the ball with fan stuff. Like, like she does like a whole thing, and I had a picture somewhere, but like you pose in front of it, and like the green screen behind you is all the Taylors through all her eras and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, like, something you, like, like that. Yep. Like you mentioned, like you know, like put like an album cover, like that'd be cool. You know, like do like the what about now? Um, yeah, remember, like when the band walked out. Yeah. Know, or you can get yourself painted, and <laughs> yeah, for four ninety nine you can get yourself painted. Yeah, and sit in the corner for like six hours and have somebody paint you. <laughs> With your eyes closed and a little straw in your lip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and have a tattoo. Have a tattoo artist so you can get tattoos. And <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Next to the, next to the Hampton Water, so then people <laughs> get tattooed. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say about the convention? Um, no, I hope people appreciate our ideas. I think, I yeah. think sort of a little bit off the cuff, but I think I think we'd have a pretty cool event. Um, oh. You know, and the, and the thing is, is I would I would organize it. I would do all of this for free just to make it happen. Forever. Yeah, you know, yeah. I would, I would do all the phone calls. I would do I would do everything for free yeah. just to, to make this happen for all of us you know yeah. and i'm glad i answered it the way i did but it, again it's going back to just 
being around Bon Jovi fans. And like you said, our relationship started that way. And, and obviously you've, you've mentioned this before, you know, you can meet so many people and learn about people and not just about their Bon Jovi connection, but make a connection with them based on this type of foundation. Yep. And just having that, having that common ground to then, you know, have, you know, more friends and more people in your life. So um, I think that'd probably be, you know, obviously a big theme of this type of event. Exactly. You said it perfect. I, I would say, you know, you're included in this. Some of the nicest and kindest people I've ever met are through this fandom. And they're, you're, you're one of them. There's people that I talk to every single day. Yeah. And, you know, I, and you, you know, I have not met yet, which is crazy. No. Yeah. Yeah. I that next year, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, but it's still amazing how, how close people can be without even meeting yet, you know? Yeah. I guess, yeah, that's definitely the, one of the, one of the few positives about social media. <laughs> you got to get on Twitter or X. I know. Twitter, they're calling it now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's like a tight circle. It's a big circle, but yeah. you know, like, like I go on there every day and post and like, I'll just talk with so many other people about whatever, like today I post about, it was like the anniversary of the Slippery One Rut tour. Oh, uh, yeah. And, um, and people are just talking about like their experience through the tour or, you know, stuff like that, you know, it's just, you know, amazing, you know, so. Yeah. But um, anyway, let me end the recording. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure, Jerry. I knew you'd be perfect for it. So, all right, let me end the recording here.